Thank you guys for watching the Animal One Guys YouTube channel. If you like my content, leave a comment down below. Ask me questions, let me know what you liked about it. And hey, click on the little like button. But please, if you want, go ahead and subscribe because it helps my channel out. That way you can stay up to date with all my videos. And if you want, click on the bell icon to get notified. Right? Right? Huh? One out of two. Not bad. Reptile Rescue Family, what's up? We're gonna talk about your bullfrog's enclosure, in this case, African bullfrog, uh, how you get through. This is John Wesley, you know, he's huge. And of course, he's still alive. He's super healthy. If you want to know about his whole prolapse drama where the vet wanted me to kill him, you can go back and look for those episodes. But I want to talk about the uh, tank I have. You know, it's not a super big tank and it's fine for him. And people always, I've talked about this before, but people ask about water features. And a lot of times those just lead to so much bacteria and dead pixie frogs, especially, and even American bullfrogs. Uh, before because these are not an underwater swimming frog these are not a big water frog they do go in the water in africa typically in the more shallow muddier areas they're in the water to not dry out right they absorb water through osmosis and that's what they do so i have you know thermostat probes humidistat probe back there that tells me you know the temperatures and humidity all good He's got um, a little heat mat underneath here that's on real low to make sure his water doesn't get too cold. And then he's got some lights, and that's it. And he lives a great life. And how do I keep, you know, this area? So there's two methods of keeping them in dirt and substrate like this, which I believe is the best way to keep them, is you can change the substrate often because they poop and they pee in it, right? And their pee is clear water you're not going to see that urine and the poop you're not going to see it mixed in the mud that's one way it's just often cleaning and i still do clean once in a while or you can go bioactive you can put plants in here it's really hard though because the pixie frogs dig them out moss works the best if you put uh, live sphagnum moss and any type of java moss that will help pull nutrients out and also you need isopods so I come in and I give him his daily spray to keep him nice and mad at me. And he sits basically in just a little mud pool of water, which is really good. But when you're doing isopods, you need to remember what do the isopods need to eat and thrive. So they are going to eat his poo. But what if he does not poo enough? There will not be enough food for the isopods and they will die. So what you can do is decaying plant matter. In this case, leaf litter. You can see there's different stages of leaves. What I've done is I've put a fake hollow log back here with holes, big holes throughout. Not for John Wesley, but for the isopods to be able to breed, culture, bring food under. And also, these areas that maybe get more wet, up there they have the high ground. And they stay more dry and, and everything. And they can be in the darkness and it's all good. Okay. So when you go to add isopods, how do you do it? You got to buy the isopods. Unless you're breeding them, I recommend you go to Josh Frogs. They have great isopods, but you can get them in other places. Just make sure you're getting breeders, not. And there's two types of isopods that I like to use. Um, you can add springtails. These are the really small, and if we were to pick John Wesley up, you would see them. Uh, and sometimes you can see them. They're really small white bugs that just are these microorganisms that just go around and they eat his poop, which is really good. Now, for these to really be effective though, you need a lot of them, a lot, a lot, a lot. And a culture like this is, you know, you can get 400 of them and they're not expensive. And people will be like, whoa, 400. And then hopefully they'll breed and replicate in here. But then also when they die, you know, they're going to eat each other and they'll die out. And then we call them roly polies. Everyone calls them roly polies. But, you know, these little mini isopods, I prefer they make, they have blue ones, they have orange ones. They all pretty much do the exact same thing. Uh, but I like getting the colored ones. That way I can see them and see that they're working. So, I have refreshed his habitat after a year, 
and remove some of the old dirt and put in some new dirt and it's time to refresh the isopods as well. This is really simple. How do you do this? You kind of just dump it in. But one thing that I also put in his dirt is I put little charcoal pellets that I would actually refresh my uh, turtle tank filters with. So they're mixed in there to you know, help neutralize. And a lot of times when you get springtails, they come in charcoal, which is just great. And uh, hopefully I'll move these around and you guys will be able to see the springtails in here. Uh, but you're just going to just take it and spread these out. I'm going to spread them out throughout the back. I only got one hand when I'm filming. Unfortunately, people don't film for me. So I'll spread these out and then we'll come back to you. Okay, here's a piece of charcoal and you can see, especially in the top right, of course now it's gone, they've all gone in the cracks. Oh, there's some. You can see uh, there's springtails all over this. So oop, there's one right there moving around. So I just put them in the tank like so, spread throughout the back. And I'm going to take some and I'm going to put them inside this log here. And then I'll just put the others right by the entrance and around the back. And we'll put this big dude, put this big dude in here. Nope, oh, I just bumped into the frog. He's mad now. And there we go. Springtail culture's in. Perfect. Yeah. Oh. Now I sprayed it down first. Oh, yeah, you can see them all coming out of the charcoal. I sprayed this down first before putting these in, but you could see the charcoal was a little bit wet already, so I don't have to add more, which is really nice. Uh, so this, again, this is super easy to do. Now we're going to go with my little roly-polies here, and you can see them all moving around and stuff. And again, I'm going to focus on back there. And this is how easy it is, guys, to get isopods going, to get them working, to put them in a bioactive enclosure, whether it's for your frog or not. Some of them require more humidity, and that's the only thing you got to keep in mind. Um, but you want to make sure you know they have access to that water, they have access to dry area. And if you're not going to provide them leaf litter, the thing is you have to make sure it's an animal that's going to provide them with enough waste that they'll ha be enough to really eat and thrive. So it's 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 better to provide them decaying, some decaying healthy matter, charcoal, leaf litter, etc. Let's get these guys in. They're all moving around. This is why it's messy, because you know you're touching dirt and charcoal. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry, it's getting mad. Um, but you can see right away, they're moving around. Now the only thing is these springtails came in dry media, it had dried out. There was some sphagnum moss in there to keep it damp, but it was mostly dry. Uh, but I'm not gonna spray it. It's already, the rest of this is, oh, there goes one little guy right there. It's already sprayed down enough. There's enough humidity in here that everything's going to be fine. Now, I realize I'm talking with the door open, but if you look, there's a little puddle of water. And when I close this, the humidity will just rise back up. Everything will be all good. And, oh, they're already going underneath in there. There's a little dude right there. Go look around for some poo to eat. Yes, they're adventuring. These are nice. They're small enough that even a frog this big is not going to go after them. They're not going to hurt my frog. The frog may end up hurting them. Oh, no, that guy's going into the, the danger zone. Because um, the frog could squish them and things like this. But that's why you give them areas the frog can't really get to. And this is nice and muddy. So, you know, if the frog does push down, hopefully they'll get not killed before they get cultivated and spread and everything. But hopefully, guys, this has helped if you had questions about doing bioactive, you just see if they need to be in mud. Sphagnum moss is great. I have sphagnum moss mixed into the soil here with the charcoal, uh, which are charcoal pellets and some charcoal wood. And give them a dark area where it can be dark all the time, even during the day. And let them do their work. What do you think? You happy? Oh, he's pissed. Take care, everybody. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.